Hello and welcome to video one of Healthy Eating with Gestational Diabetes. What is gestational diabetes? In this video, we will answer some important questions about gestational diabetes, discussing what it is, the symptoms it can cause, how it can affect you and your baby, and the ways in which it can be treated. So what is gestational diabetes? Gestational diabetes, or GDM, is the name given to a type of diabetes which has developed during pregnancy. It most commonly develops around 26 weeks gestation and is characterised by an increase in the amount of glucose, or sugar, in the bloodstream. When the body digests foods or drinks that contain carbohydrates, one of the body's main nutrients, it turns them into a type of sugar called glucose. This glucose gets absorbed into our bloodstream, which makes blood glucose levels rise. Normally, our body's pancreas will then produce a hormone called insulin to control these blood glucose levels and stop them from going too high. Insulin works very much like a key, allowing excess glucose to move out of the bloodstream and into the body's cells where it can be used for energy. However, changes to the levels of other hormones during pregnancy can upset this process. As normal, the pancreas produces insulin when blood glucose levels rise, but it may not work as well, so more insulin may be needed. This is called insulin resistance. Gestational diabetes develops if the body cannot meet this increased demand. Without enough insulin, less glucose is able to move out of the bloodstream and blood glucose levels can stay too high. There are some classic symptoms of gestational diabetes which you may or may not have experienced before diagnosis. These can include blurred vision, increased urinary frequency, increased thirst, tiredness, and recurrent urinary tract infections, or UTIs. These symptoms should subside with an improvement to your blood glucose levels. How could it affect you and your baby? By your third trimester, around 28 weeks, your baby's major organs are well developed. It is still important, however, that you keep your blood glucose levels as near to normal as possible. The ideal levels you should be aiming for will be discussed with you by your diabetes team, who will support you throughout your pregnancy to optimise your control. If your blood glucose levels are left to run too high, too many calories will be delivered to your baby and this may lead to complications. It is important you're aware of what these complications are. These can be further discussed with your midwife or medical team when you attend your clinic appointments. Complications which you could experience include preeclampsia, too much fluid being developed in the womb, difficulties during delivery and induced labour or caesarean section. Possible complications for your baby include them gaining excess weight during pregnancy, that their blood glucose levels could be low after birth and need monitored until they stabilise, and a very small increase in the risk of stillbirth. But remember, with the correct treatment of your gestational diabetes, you may not experience any of these complications. So how is it treated? Sometimes following dietary changes is enough to control your blood glucose levels, but some women will need to start oral medication or insulin injections to achieve this. This can often be out with your control. However, it is still very important that you continue to follow dietary advice with or without medication. We have now reached the end of video one of healthy eating with gestational diabetes. We hope to have answered the questions highlighted at the beginning of the video relating to what gestational diabetes is, 
its possible side effects and how it can be effectively managed to reduce health risks and promote a healthy, happy pregnancy. This video was produced by registered dietitians from the NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde Diabetes Service. We thank you for watching and now encourage you to watch video 2 – Healthy Eating and an Overview of the Food Groups.